and you go and you scope their Instagram, and she's got pictures with her parents. She got pictures with her father in particular. A woman with a father. Women with fathers that care about them, that they love their father, that don't have uh, daddy issues. That's a great, that's a good one. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I used to chase women and talk to them even if they weren't what I wanted and I had no purpose and boundaries. Since having a purpose, I feel great with just being. I'm also very strict with the type of woman I want. Example, to a point where there, where one doesn't, he wants a girl that doesn't consume alcohol and he's not having sex with them as soon as he meets them. Honestly, I don't feel the desire to have sex with them as I don't want to risk uh, the amounts of pleasure for entertainment purposes. I understand what qualities I should find in a woman. Uh, would I have them as a mother to my child? How do they speak and act? How do I actually meet someone physically as I find dating apps weak and a false sense of communication? I also don't enjoy clubbing as I always sleep before 1130. Okay. So, you know, my answer is probably not one that most dudes will re relate to or want to relate to, but I think it's a great idea. Religious conservatism. I go to a traditional Latin mass a few times a week, right? And this is a church where all the women wear long skirts and they cover their heads. And it's not even like a new thing for me. I've always been attracted to women that are conservative. I just, I didn't know what that was in me. And I used to be like, man, I'm just weird. But now I understand why I've been, always been attracted to women that were conservative. Because it shows that they have a family that cares about them. It shows that they have a father that created boundaries. It shows that they have reverence for authority and that there's something above them. I would look for, if I was in your case, regardless of your religion, whatever your religion, I don't know. I mean, I see Hindu girls that look very modest. Uh, look for a religious, conservative church or mosque or whatever you, you know whatever it is that you're into and start scoping out and speaking to and then courting this is interesting right speaking to but courting a woman that you may find to be of your liking within that realm here's here's why i say this is interesting with regard to courting by the way they're fixing the freaking roof next door so if you guys hear banging that's what that is man what my luck is uh the dating, dating is a new conception. And this is something I wanted to mention in previous uh, call, but I forgot. Dating is a new conception. And, it's, and dating today is basically a rush into how quickly we can become emotionally and physically entangled with one another. How quickly can we get into bed? How quickly can you be become addicted to each other? That's what dating is. Dating is how quickly can we get hooked up how quickly can we become dependent on and start having emotional problems with one another or emotional uh uh disordered emotional attachment to one another courting right and if you want to go on youtube you could see uh father chad ripager put up a, a, a there's a youtube video called the five stages of courting courting is legitimately like about vetting someone's Vetting someone's capacity or vetting someone's uh, ability, vetting someone's character in terms of their suitability, that's the word I was looking for, suitability for lifelong, long-term, healthy, happy, monogamous, traditional, conservative, family relationships, which... <laughs> Sounds great to me. That sounds amazing to me. That sounds wonderful to me, right? What else would you want if you're looking for a woman, right? Besides sex, well then swipe. If you're looking for sex, then just swipe. But if you're looking for a wife, if you're looking for a long-term partner, somebody to, to build your kingdom with, then you gotta look for somebody with that kind of character, that, that kind of 
of value, virtue, mindset, faith. And so that's my advice. I would go to where I would try to find the most religiously conservative community in your, you know, whatever your nationality or whatever your religion is. Bro, I was in Miami uh, a couple weeks ago. And in Miami, there's a lot of Hasidic Jews, Hasids, the Hasidics. And these are, these are religious, really conservative Jews. And the women, they walk around with long skirts and some of them cover their heads and they look conservative and they're usually pushing, pushing baby carriages. Um, I thought that was amazing. Amish, <laughs> I'm just telling you what I think. Amish, right? When we were camping, me and my kids, my family we were camping once, an Amish family was next to us. The way the the women were and the little girls were uh, modest, conservative, pious, respectful to their parents. Man, I wish I was Amish. <laughs> Go be Amish. You know who's got it nailed too? And look, I'm not. This is not about judging religions or telling you what religion to be about. It's about. It's truly about conservatism, traditionalism, conservatism. It's not about, even about the religion. I'm Catholic, so I would say go Catholic. But these Mormons, these Mormons got it. Got it nailed in a lot of way. I'm not saying everybody from every. You know, I'm not saying all of them. But I know a lot of Mormons, and they're religious, conservative, and the women are pious. They don't. Look, act, behave in many instances like the thoughts on Instagram, right? The last place I would go is on Instagram to go find a, to look for a woman. That's the worst. That's the greatest. That's the craziest. And I see it all the time. Like, you know, every once in a while, there'll be a woman that will DM me. And I, she's not obviously trying to press, but I'm like, why are you hitting me up? And I'll go and look on their profile. And it's it, the minute I see bathing suit, belly button, bare shoulders uh, and, and selfies, I'm like, eh, because she's a billboard bitch. I don't want a billboard bitch. I don't want somebody who's, who's walking around looking like a billboard, you know, because advertising and shit. And when you look at a girl's Instagram, that's basically a billboard. If I go on her Instagram and I see that she is is modest and she's religious and maybe she got some chickens in the backyard. If I see pictures with her and her father, oh, this is huge. This is huge. If you if you if you happen to just come across somebody on Instagram, right, and you're trying to find you know not just trying to find a wife, but it's like I get it because we live in that world. Maybe you're not swiping, but somebody comments on something, or you, or you know, you 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 see somebody say something that resonates with you, and you go and you scope their Instagram, and she's got pictures with her parents. She got pictures with her father in particular. A woman with a father, woman with fathers that care about them, that they love their father, that they don't have. Uh, daddy issues that's a great that's a good one that's one that I would I would pay attention to um and of course now we're talking about red flags and shit but like you know tattoos weird hair stuff like that when I say weird hair I mean like like different colors half half shaved you know stuff like that um most of the time they're rebellious women I don't want a rebellious woman right and so that's my advice on that, man. So your question is, you know, how would I go about looking for a woman? Go to your religious services. Find the most religious conservative service available in your, your faith. <laughs> and you're not going to be a creeper. Don't go there as a creeper. But you know what? A lot of times they have like, the youth get togethers, right? I know the, uh, the, the, the traditional Latin mass that I go to, they have like youth get togethers that are chaperones, you know, for, for, <laughs> for young people, for young men and women to get to know each other. This is going to be an issue when I, when I'm, you know, ultimately at some point, my daughters are going to need husbands. And I, you know, don't think, I don't think about this stuff. And this is what Kings of the old used to do. And this is what I'm thinking about doing myself because, you know, my children are not out there. I'm not letting my 
children be out there. Uh, you know, I can't control every aspect of their life, but I'm not creating a world and an environment where they just, my kids are just out there. So what you do and what the old kings used to do is that they would have galas, they would have balls, <laughs> right? Like, like uh, Cinderella at their house or in their organization, right? And they would invite the families with the young men, you know, the children, the, the, the sons to come to the gala, right? To the ball, like, like uh, Cinderella ball. So that only the, they only have access to, or they have access to the best, the cream of the crop, right? Parents, fathers, create, create space where your daughters and sons can find great mates. I think that's something that we need to bring back. I think that's something that we need to do. We need to, we need to create relationships with and be in organizations or create organizations uh, when I say organization, I don't literally mean like literal, like uh, like formal organizations, but like balls, parties, get togethers where your kids are going to be around approved partners, right? It sounds a little crazy, but that's the way things have always been done. The, the, con the new concept of dating and romantic love has destroyed our culture. Romeo and Juliet, Disney culture. And it gets people into bad relationships, relationships with people they shouldn't be a part of, falling in lust. People aren't in love these days. They're in lust. If you think you're in love and you stop having sex, you stop fornicating, you'll see how quickly you wasn't in love. You was in lust. Because all the anger, all the demons, all the things that were suppressed while you were uh, uh, numbing yourself with their sex, very quickly, uh, very quickly rises to the surface. So that's it, man. That's what I would do. That's where I would go. That's how I would handle it. If I was Jewish, I go to Miami and I go find a Hasidic girl, <laughs> right? If I was if I was Muslim, I go to the mosque. I try to find the most conservative one I could. Find a girl in a nice hij hijab, right? The Muslims cover their their girls all their face up and shit too, so you can't even see if their face is pretty. Um. But in my case, I would go to um, I would go to 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 the to the traditional Latin mass, and just try to be a part of the organization, try to be a part of their the get-togethers, and you know, and then and then you put on your you put on your good game. So that's it. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, and you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.